All right, guys, we are back. It is so great to see you here with me this evening. Wherever you are in this world, I hope you're staying safe, healthy, and making good use of your time. And for me, guys, there isn't anything better than getting outside with fresh air and shooting sunsets. Even more relevant these days. But personally, I love shooting sunset over the ocean. In fact, nine out of 10 times, that's exactly where I'm going to be, somewhere along the coast, photographing a sunrise or sunset. Now, regardless where you photograph sunsets, the tips I'm going to outline in this video will apply to your situation. Now, this isn't a complete list of every sunset photography tip in the world. Instead, guys, these are the things that I personally do that have benefited me over the years, and I hope you find the same value out of these. Now, if you hang around with me to the end of this video, you'll also get the inside track of how you can win a awesome prize in one of our giveaways coming up. More details on that momentarily. So, pull up a seat, let's go. Now, one of the questions that I get asked quite frequently is, Alex, what apps do you use on your phone? What is your favorite app for relating to sunsets? Well, guys, my favorite app is My Sunset. First thing is first, if you don't have a sunset tracking app on your phone, you need to get one. Go ahead, go to the App Store or whatever Android people use. I'll wait. I'm gonna assume that you're going to do that because it's getting laid out right now. After this video, make sure you do it. I'll put a link down below to My Sunset. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I like My Sunset a lot because it helps me figure out what the colors might look like when I show up for a sunset or a sunrise. It also provides me data for the next six days, which makes planning ahead a bit easier. One of the features is that you can enter a custom location and each location has a forecast percentage that is accompanied by a prediction of the quality of the sunrise or the sunset. You can also get details about the cloud cover, humidity, wind speed, and direction and other factors that can impact how the sunset or sunrise will look. So if it's looking out there like there's gonna be too much cloud cover, I simply don't bother heading out to my favorite locations. And how the app works, it's actually quite simple, guys. So it works off of a scale from one to 100. 100 is going to be a awesome, incredible sunrise. The colors are gonna be amazing. Zero is, hey, you stay indoors with Netflix. And it's also color coded as well, which I don't know whether that's gonna show. I'm just gonna put it up right here. So the colors go from blue all the way up to red. And from blue, purple, yellow, orange, red. That's the kind of the progression as it goes along. Blue, it's probably raining, cloud, just horrible. Um, once you get up into the yellows, it's not too bad. Orange is actually pretty good. Red, badass, drop everything, get your ass outdoors and get a sunrise or sunset. Like for example, if we look at this Saturday, uh, it's looking 89% and it's red. So Saturday morning, based upon this, would be a great sunrise. There's no really good opportunities. I mean, really jumping out to me for a sunset in there during the next handful of days based upon this. Now, is the app 100% perfect all the time? No, guys. It's, it's just a really good tool for getting some basic intel about what the sunset might have in store for me. There's other factors that kind of build a little bit more into that forecast and, okay, do you actually go out? Next, research the location ahead of time. I can't stress enough how important it is to research the location where you want to take photos. Doing some recon ahead of time will save you all kinds of time and effort later down the road. But research needs to extend simply beyond the My Sunset or whatever sunset app that you're using. I actually like to go to the location where I want to do the shoot before I take the photo. Pretty novel idea, right? By actually scoping out the location beforehand, I can get my plan figured out. And this includes practical things like, man, where am I going to park? How long is it going to take me from get to where I'm parking to where I want to go shooting? This also allows me to pick my spot as well, but I don't just find a nice looking spot and call it a day. No, guys. I explore, guys. I consider different vantage points. I also think about how I can position my camera to capture the most interesting foreground. I'll be giving you guys a little example a little bit later, but this ties into this right here. I like to have a plan B and a plan C lined up ahead of time as well. So if one position doesn't work out, I can move on to another one and another one pretty fast without having to put much thought into it. I also take times to take test shots while I'm exploring as well. The time of the day 
yeah, it doesn't really matter with these test shots. I'm just trying to figure out things from a compositional standpoint. Now, while I'm out scouting on the location, I also check with apps like TPE, which by the way, if you don't have this app, this is another app that you really want to make sure you get on your phone. So the point with this is I can, with this app, I can know where the path of the sun is in relative to where I'm at. This also allows me to visualize how the light will fall across the landscape and how I can capture the light and shadows most effectively in my photos. Another thing I like to do is check with webcams on the location. You'd be surprised at how many locations that you're probably already going to that may have webcams maybe 10 to 15 miles away or so that you can easily access. Two of my favorite locations are Laguna Beach and Huntington Beach. Both of these have webcams I can easily check and then I cross-reference what I see with my sunset is telling me as well. Having two different kinds of information, what's actually happening right now in the webcam and what is predicted to happen in the app. Just gives me that much more information that I can use for planning purposes. Next, make sure all your gear is in order and settings are locked and loaded. Getting familiar with the location and having a plan for the shoot before you get there is only part of the plan. You also want to make sure that all your gear is in order before you even leave the house. This includes things like having your batteries fully charged in your camera. You also need to do an inventory of your gear to make sure you have everything you need in your bag. A cable release, memory cards, filters, tripod, uh, uh, microfiber cloths. Man, three weeks ago that happened to me. Or no, I'm sorry, last month rather. You should also know what lens you're going to use to capture the shot as well. By now, you should have taken some test shots and know what lens you're going to use and what focal length you want to use as well. Make sure that lens is clean beforehand so when you get to the location, it's just a matter of taking that thing out, slapping on the camera, getting the settings all dialed in, and waiting for that magic moment to take place. I can't stress it enough, it's all about prior preparation. The more you plan and prepare, the less likely things will go wrong when you head out. Next, filters, filters, Filters. Filters get their own spot here. They are that important. Guys, I can't stress how important it is to have the right filters when you're trying to photograph a sunset. Personally, I always have a three, a six, a 10 stop ND with me, usually a three or four stop soft edge graduated ND and a reverse grad. When the sun's going down, things are really brightest on the horizon for obvious reasons. But if you expose for the horizon with no filter, that foreground is going to be underexposed. To correct this problem, using a specialized filter like a reverse ND or a soft edge grad will save the day. Now, a reverse ND is darkest in the middle of the filter, so it's perfect for blocking out the intense sun along the horizon. But you can also use a soft edge grad in this situation as well. It'll darken the horizon and the sky while leaving the landscape in the foreground alone. I also like to have solid NDs with me as well, just in case I decide to take it wild and crazy and want to do some long exposure work. Since I like to go to the beach, there's lots of opportunities for blurring movement of the water as it comes ashore. Even the clouds moving is a great opportunity to get a little kind of buttery smooth cloud action going. It's a nice compliment to the setting sun and the colors of the sky. Next, don't go running up. The sun has gone below their horizon and there seems to be nothing left. So what do you do? Pack up and leave, right? Mm-mm, no. Stay planted right where you're at. Wait 15 minutes. You never know when the clouds might shift enough where the red sky or orange colors will light up the sky. I don't know how many times that I've captured shots that I really enjoy after the sun had gone down and the colors were looking at this point a little bit on the blah side, only to have a silver lining color show just a few minutes later. Don't be that guy that packs up and leaves soon. Guys, another 10 to 15 minutes sitting there enjoying the beauty of what's in front of you, it's not going to kill you. <laughs> Next, include people when you can. When I'm on location, I love it when people cross in front of my path. They become instant silhouettes that give much more visual interest to the photo. Even if the people are shot really far away, the human form in your photo will instantly grab people's attention. Now, if the people are moving, you will need to change some of the camera settings quickly so they don't become a blur. But if you're lucky, they will stop in the middle of your frame and they're going to break out a little YMCA song? If that's the case, guys, fire away. Next, be patient and persistent. I can't tell you how many times I've gone through all these steps and got skunked during the sunset. Many locations that I like for shooting sunsets require a bit of a hike to go to, and it's always a bummer to walk away without the shot I want. But there's no way to have 100% precision when forecasting what the weather is going to do or not do. So if you're going to be successful photographing sunsets, you have to be patient and persistent. You want an example? I'm gonna give you an example. There's a spot that I love, Laguna Beach. 
I have been literally hiking to this particular location four times already over the previous couple months. And guys, each time there was crummy light when I got to the location. To make matters worse, when you get there, you have to take a flight of steep, skinny stairs and hike about a quarter of a mile to the location while carrying a pack loader for your gear. It's a workout for sure. Actually, it's more of a workout while going back because there's like 300, it's not exaggeration, there's 300 stairs and it's going down like this and the stairs are like this. A lot of the steps are broken so you have to really watch where you're stepping. But I can't tell you how disappointing and tiring all those trips were then persistence paid off. Just two weeks ago, I finally got the shot that I've been wanting to get for months. So here's what happened when I got there. Well, first, the colors just came out of nowhere and so this was a very last minute haul ass to get to the location i literally was watching minutes as i was going i knew it was going to be close i parked my car i go running down the stairs i go hauling ass down to the beach because you're, you're walking through about a quarter mile of beach as i'm getting to the location where the cave entrance is i start noticing it's high tide forgot to check whether high tide was in. I've never been there during high tide before. So I was in street clothes, jeans, and regular sneakers and had to wade through three feet of surf for about 40 feet. After that was another 20 feet of wading through three feet of water to get to the part of the cave where I wanted to set up my shot. But it was worth it. My patience and persistence had finally paid off. Woot woot. <laughs> Actually, the original spot that I was shooting at, the colors didn't work out for me. But as I mentioned earlier, one of my secondary shots really ended up being the spot and the, was the shot that I ended up walking away with really happy with. Look, you can go through your entire checklist each and every time, but as my experience demonstrates, sometimes it still doesn't work out. Failure is part of the process, and if you ask me, it makes the moment when all goes right all that much more awesome. So be patient and don't give up. Your best shot is out there. You just have to work for it. Now let's discuss the awesome giveaway. Here are the prizes you can win. A GoPro Hero 8 Black, a GoPro Hero 7 Black, a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, a $100 Adorama gift card, and guys, each of the winners will receive a Octopad, and this thing is honestly one of my favorite things for my camera bag, which is why I want you to have one of these. It's great for having a second set of hands for stabilizing your GoPro, mic, lights, well, you name it. The contest runs through April 15, 2020, so time is of the essence. Here's what you need to do to enter. Step one, like this video. Step two, leave a comment below. In fact, the more of our videos that you watch and comment on, the more chance that you have to win. So get watching some more of our other videos and leave some comments. Step three, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Guys, that's it. For complete details on the giveaway, check out the description below. As always, thank you for tuning in. If you found this video to be helpful, hit the like button down below. If you are currently not subscribed to the channel, Hit the subscribe button, and while you're at it, hit the bell to be notified as we're coming out with new videos. So, I'm gonna buzz out of here, and my friend, you stay healthy and create your best shot.